Hello, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we're super happy to have you here. And if you've been listening and enjoying for a while, I would be super grateful if you would please take a moment to give us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's one of the best and simplest ways to pay it forward and help others find the show so that they too can tap into the powerful perspectives and positive vibrations we are collectively emanating. The other unique and magical way to share this show is by sending any friends you think would benefit from listening to this podcast, our Game with the Universe link at positivehead.com forward slash game, also listed in the show notes, which will serve them up a quote unquote random episode when they click it. Just instruct them before clicking the link to close their eyes for a moment and sincerely Ask the universe to queue up the episode that contains the insight and perspectives that they most need to hear at this point in their life journey, and then click to listen to whatever episode is synchronistically served up to them. I have heard time and time again from people about the incredible results they received playing the game, so just tell your friends magical results are guaranteed or their karma back. All right, all you positive heads, welcome back to another episode of the Positive Head Podcast. So happy to be here on this magical Monday as I record. And uh, yeah, dig into another wonderful week that uh, we are also blessed to have to experience uh, more life on Spaceship Earth. (laughs) And uh, yeah, I'm going to just dig right in here. Um, My voice is a little... Slightly little bit hoarse this weekend, had a long, or this morning, had a long weekend and probably way too much talking, as I can tend to do from time to time. So uh, yeah, hopefully it's not too noticeable on your end, but if I sound a little crackly, that's probably why. (laughs) Too much fun, you know. Uh, Let's see, where are we at? I want to start with a review. I was lucky enough, blessed enough to have a, a wonderful review to wake up to today. And uh, this is on iTunes. For those of you who haven't left a review on iTunes, it is, uh, as I always say, the holy grail of all things podcasting. So leaving reviews there helps to continue to sort of, uh, well, one, fuel my fire. Um, I love hearing feedback from you guys, but also to reach new listeners as it uh, sort of helps in the charts and so forth, so on which we've been doing really well. And thanks to all of you leaving reviews. And uh, I appreciate it so much. This one was by Turn Up The Beat. (laughs) Turn Up as in the vegetable, the beat. (laughs) And uh, this is, the title says, Wind Beneath My Sails. I have been listening to the Positive Head podcast for the past couple months, and I am so incredibly grateful I stumbled upon this source of inspiration and guidance. Anytime I'm feeling off course, I play a random episode, and the message is always exactly what I'm needing to hear in the moment. Today, I played the Law of Giving episode and had many aha moments. So many, in fact, that I listened to it twice. Listening also helps me to remain present and positive and has a very healing effect. The gift you are sharing is truly incredible. Thank you, Brandon, for your dedication to this wonderful labor of love. Oh, thank you, Turn Up the Beat. Uh, uh, Oh, and it's spelled beat, B-E-E-T, for any of you who haven't, uh, you know, just to continue continue to to paint the picture of understanding of how clever uh, Turn Up the Beat is here with uh, a little bit of humor this morning. And um, thank you for turning up. My heartbeat, aw, because uh, it makes me so happy to, to hear that I'm touching your life in any way, shape, or form. And of course, you are doing the work. I'm just uh, a reflection here, reflecting back a part of self. And that's something that I always, always want to um, kind of drive that point home. It's, uh, this is this is you guys. This is, this is as much yours as mine. I'm just sort of reflecting you back to you. So you got this and uh, I appreciate you uh, continuing to tune in and share with, uh, you know, friends, family, so forth, so on. 
Let's see here. Moving right along, what am I going to do today? Well, I uh, had a little bit of a, a cool synchronicity, so I was trying this morning to figure out what I wanted to talk about, and I was like, hmm, should I do uh, the next chapter in The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, which I left off at some point last week. Uh, I think we're up to chapter four. And uh, I had just re- reposted, you know how Facebook will say, hey, share a memory, and there was a memory from like, uh, a year ago that popped up that I had shared uh, yesterday evening because it's such a great quote. And uh, I'd actually shared it on our Facebook group. By the way, if you haven't, Positive Heads with an S uh, is the Facebook group where we mix it up. Come join in. If you haven't uh, joined the fun already, it's uh, a bunch of lovely listeners and myself and, you know, just mixing it up, sharing, connecting. Um, and yeah, it's beautiful. So I shared this uh, this uh, little meme from a year ago that had popped up, um, and uh, it is such a great, great quote from Aldous Huxley, and it says, It's dark because you are trying too hard. Lightly, child, lightly. Learn to do everything lightly. Yes, feel lightly, even though you're feeling deeply. Just lightly let things happen and lightly cope with them. So throw away your baggage and go forward. There are quicksands all about you, sucking at your feet, trying to suck you down into fear and self-pity and despair. That's why you must walk so lightly, lightly, my darling. And uh, this one really resonates with me. It's just as someone who is, uh, has lots of energy and is definitely a doer, um, I've had to really work on this one. And it, I got to say, I've made a lot of good progress and uh, it is... It's so, so nice to be able to relax into things like just stop, just stop trying so hard or stop worrying about the outcome. Just allow it to be whatever it's going to be. You don't need it. You don't need to force anything. And uh, yeah, it's a daily conscious effort. I still have my moments, but for the most part, feeling, getting lighter about things, whatever's meant for you cannot avoid you. The only thing that you can keep it at bay by resisting or trying too hard or swimming upstream as Abraham would talk about, right? Abraham says, look, whenever you're trying so hard, you're swimming upstream. And what happens when you swim upstream? You're getting, you're getting worn out for one, right? You're getting beaten against the rocks uh, as you, it's, you're going against the natural flow of whatever is happening. And she says, you don't even need to swim downstream. You just need to get neutral and, uh, and the current will carry you. So, you know, this is an important, important lesson for us all to get. And that is to feel lightly, go lightly, just, just let it flow. You don't need anything, anyone, any circumstance. It will all unfold really naturally when you allow it to do so. And of course, so I just shared that. What is, do you think the chapter for today? Um, So it is chapter four, the law of least effort. (laughs) So here we go. Apparently, this is the topic for today. And uh, right on on the front of the page, it says, nature's intelligence functions with effortless ease, with carefreeness, harmony, and love. And when we harness the forces of harmony, joy, and love, we create success and good fortune with effortless ease. The quote at the top of the chapter is by Lao Tzu, and it's an integral being knows without going, sees without looking, and accomplishes without doing. The fourth spiritual law of success is the law of least effort. This law is based on the fact that nature's intelligence functions with effortless ease and abandoned carefreeness. This is the principle of least action, of no resistance. This is, therefore, the principle of harmony and love. When we learn this lesson from nature, we easily fulfill our desires. If you observe nature at work, you will see that least effort is expanded. Grass doesn't try to grow, it just grows. Fish don't try to swim, they just swim. Flowers don't try to bloom, they bloom. Birds don't try to fly, they fly. This is their intrinsic nature. The earth doesn't try to spin on its own axis. It is the nature of the earth to spin with dizzying speed and to hurtle through space. It is the nature of baby, babies to be in bliss. It is the nature of the sun to shine. It is the nature of the stars to glitter and sparkle. And it is human nature to make our dreams manifest into physical form easily and effortlessly. In Vedic science, the age-old philosophy of India, this principle is known as the principle of economy of effort or do less and accomplish more. It's sort of like work smarter, not harder, right? Um, 
Ultimately, they come to the state where you do nothing and accomplish everything. This means that there's just a faint idea, and then the manifestation of the idea comes about effortlessly. What is commonly called a miracle is actually an expression of the law of least effort. Nature's intelligence functions effortlessly, frictionlessly, spontaneously. It is non-linear. It is intuitive, holistic, and nourishing. And when you are in harmony with nature, when you are established in the knowledge of your true self, you can make use of the law of least effort. Least effort is expended when your actions are motivated by love, because nature is held together by the energy of love. When you seek power and control over other people, you waste energy. When you seek money or power for the sake of the ego, you spend energy chasing the illusion of happiness instead of enjoying happiness in the moment. Before we continue on with today's episode, for those of you interested in getting more fantastic fungi in your life, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about a friend of mine's brand new company, The Great Mother. Recently, I have been drinking the Great Mother's superfood mushroom coffee alternative called Ritual, as well as regularly taking their awesome ally microdoses, and I am truly loving both. As you probably know, these days, many of the world's highest achievers and performers swear by microdosing. The problem is it can still be difficult to get a hold of magic mushrooms. That's why when my friend reached out who lives in an area and country where legalization is not a problem like it was in the past and said he'd be willing to offer microdoses to my listeners, I wanted to pass the word along. Ally microdoses are 100% organic. And in addition to a small amount of the magic active ingredient, they also contain functional mushrooms like lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga, and other brain boosters like bacopa. Ally is essentially a full spectrum nootropic. And of course, the coffee alternative ritual doesn't contain magic mushrooms, but it has an array of the best organic functional mushrooms in the world. And, you know, with functional mushrooms, it's really important to get them from the highest integrity sources. And whereas some other highly popular mushroom coffee alternatives on the market only contain a few varieties of functional mushrooms in their actual ingredients, Ritual has seven. Not only does it contain more types, it also contains three to four times the amount that the big brands have in each serving. And it tastes amazing. I actually like to have it on its own as well as mixing it into my coffee sometimes as well. However, since this is definitely a unique offering. There are a few steps. First, just reach out and request to follow the private page, the great dot mother on Instagram. Once you've been accepted to follow, just message what you're interested in getting and someone will get back to you. When you seek money for personal gain only, you cut off the flow of energy to yourself and interfere with the expression of nature's intelligence. But when your actions are motivated by love, there is no waste of energy. When your actions are motivated by love, your energy multiplies and accumulates, and the surplus energy you gather and enjoy can be channeled to create anything that you want, including unlimited wealth. You can think of your physical body as a device for controlling energy. It can generate, store, and expend energy. If you know how to generate, store, and expend energy in an efficient way, then you can create any amount of wealth. Attention to the ego consumes the greatest amount of energy. When your internal reference point is the ego, when you seek power and control over other people or seek approval from others, you spend energy in a wasteful way. When that energy is freed up, it can be rechanneled and used to create anything that you want. When your internal reference point is your spirit, when you are immune to criticism and unfearful of any challenge, you can harness the power of love and use energy creatively for the experience of affluence and evolution. In The Art of Dreaming, Don Juan tells Carlos Castaneda, most of our energy goes into upholding our importance. If we are capable of losing some of that importance, two extraordinarily thing, extraordinary things would happen to us. One, we would free our energy from trying to maintain the illusory idea of our grandeur. And two, we would provide ourselves with enough energy to catch a glimpse of the actual grandeur of the universe. There are three components to the law of least effort. Three things you can do to put this principle of do less and accomplish more into action. The first component is acceptance. Acceptance simply means that you make a commitment. Today, I will accept people, situations, circumstances, and events as they occur. This means I, I will know that this moment is as it should be because the whole universe is as it should be. The moment 
This moment, the one you're experiencing right now, is the culmination of all the moments you have experienced in the past. This moment is as it is because the entire universe is as it is. When you struggle against this moment, you're actually struggling against the entire universe. Instead, you can make the decision that today you will not struggle against the whole universe by struggling against this moment. This means that your acceptance of this moment is total and complete. You accept things as they are, not as you wish they were in this moment. This is important to understand. You can wish for things in the future to be different, but in this moment, you have to accept things as they are. When you feel frustrated or upset by a person or a situation, remember that you're not reaching to the person or the situation, but to your feelings about the person or the situation. These are your feelings, and your feelings are not someone else's fault. When you recognize and understand this completely, you are ready to take responsibility for how you feel and to change it. And if you can accept things as they are, you're ready to take responsibility for your situation and for all the events you see as problems. This leads us to the second component of the law of least effort, responsibility. What does responsibility mean? Responsibility means not blaming anyone or anything for your situation, including yourself. Having accepted these circumstance, this circumstance, this event, this problem, responsibility then means the ability to have a creative response to the situation as it is now. All problems contain the seeds of opportunity, and this awareness allows you to take the moment and transform it to a better situation or thing. Once you do this, every so-called upsetting situation will become an opportunity for the creation of something new and beautiful, and every so-called tormentor or tyrant will become your teacher. Reality is an interpretation, and if you choose to interpret reality in this way, you will have many teachers around you and many opportunities to evolve. Whenever confronted by a tyrant, tormentor, teacher, friend, or foe, they all mean the same thing, remind yourself, this moment is as it should be. Whatever relationship you have attracted in your life at this moment are precisely the ones you need in your life at this moment. There's a hidden meaning behind all events, and this hidden meaning is serving your own evolution. The third component of the law of least effort is defenselessness, which means that your awareness is established in defenselessness, and you have relinquished the need to convince or persuade others of your point of view. If you observe people around you, you'll see that they spend 99% of their time defending their points of view. Okay, I gotta stop there for a second. This has been a big one for me, like always needing to prove that I'm right from my perspective. And I'll tell you guys, let, learning to just let go of needing to tell my my side of the story or my perspective on things, it's a huge relief. Like you can just like rise above it. And I don't always do it. But yeah, this is a really, really big one. Think of how much time we spend like saying, you know, just, you know, aggressively telling someone who's doing something that we don't like that we see is outside of our our you know, perspective on how things should be or how they should behave. And if you can just let all that go, oh man, it frees up a lot of energy, let me tell you. Uh, Still working on that one, but making good progress. So anyway, to pick right back up. If you just relinquish the need to defend your point of view, you will in that relinquishment gain access to the enormous amount of energy that you've been previously wasted. When you become defensive, blame others and do not accept and surrender to the moment, your life meets resistance. Anytime you encounter resistance, recognize that if you force the situation, the resistance will only increase. You don't want to stand rigid like a tall oak that cracks and collapses in the storm. Instead, you want to be flexible like a reed that bends with the storm and survives. Completely desist from defending your point of view. When you have no point to defend, you do not allow the birth of an argument. If you do this consistently, if you stop fighting and resisting, you will fully experience this, the present, which is a gift. Someone once told me the past is history, the future is a mystery, and this moment is a gift. That is why this moment is called the present. If you embrace the present and become one with it and merge with it, you will experience a fire, a glow, a sparkle of ecstasy throbbing in every living sentient being. As you begin to experience this exaltation of spirit and everything that is alive, as you become intimate with it, joy will be born within you and you will drop the terrible burdens and encumbrances of defensiveness, resentment, and hurtfulness. Only then will you become lighthearted, carefree, joyous, and free. In this joyful, simple freedom, you will know without any doubt in your heart that what you want is available to you whenever you want it. 
because your want will be from the level of happiness, not from the level of anxiety or fear. You do not need to justify. Simply declare your intent to, to yourself and you will experience fulfillment, delight, joy, freedom, and autonomy in every moment of your life. Make a commitment to follow the path of no resistance. This is the path through which nature's intelligence unfolds spontaneously without friction or effort. When you have the exquisite combination of acceptance, responsibility, and defenselessness, you will experience life flowing with effortless ease. When you remain open to all points of view, not rigidly attached to only one, your dreams and desires will flow with nature's desires. Then you can release your intentions without attachment and just wait for the appropriate season for your desires to bloom into, blossom into reality. You can be sure that when the season is right, your desires will manifest. This is the law of least effort. Ah, such a powerful one. How great, how great to go with the quote that magically appeared from a year ago. Uh, So perfect. So here we are on the applying the law of least effort section, gives you a few little pointers on how to put this stuff into action. And it says, I will put the law of least effort into effect by making a commitment to take the following steps. I will practice acceptance. Today, I will accept people, situations, circumstances, and events as they occur. I will know that this moment is as it should be because the whole universe is as it should be. I will not struggle against the whole universe by struggling against this moment. My acceptance is total and complete. I accept things as they are in this moment, not as I wish they were. Having accepted things, number two, having accepted things as they are, I will take responsibility for my situation and for all those events I see as problems. I know that taking responsibility means not blaming anyone or anything for my situation, and this includes myself. I also know that every problem is an opportunity in disguise, and this alertness to opportunities allows me to take this moment and transform it into a greater benefit. Number three, today my awareness will remain established in defenselessness. I will relinquish the need to defend my point of view. I will feel no need to convince or persuade others to accept my point of view. I will remain open to all points of view and not be rigidly attached to any of them. Ah, that's such a big one. Such a big one, as I said earlier for me. And that's the end, guys. Um, But, uh... Yeah, think about that. How how much time do we spend defending ourselves and our point of view? Just let it go and just smile, relax into it. You can have your point of view. Don't waste any energy trying to win, trying to win an argument, trying to be right. It's it's such a drain and it's resonating with ego energy in and separation and just to, just let people be different. Let people you can think they're their perspective is crazy or what have you. You don't need anything. It's giving you an opportunity to rise above, uh, playing in the mud, so to speak, with people. And uh, yeah, I think, like I said, that one just is such a big one for me. And uh, I love this chapter. I hope you guys love it too. I'm sure you do. I'm sure it's just right for what you're doing today. And I hope you remember it and uh, it serves you well. And uh, it has been an honor to serve you well. Uh, Hopefully I've served you well here today doing this labor of love. And uh, let's see, I do have some music to leave you with. And appropriately enough, the song that just popped up on my SoundCloud feed a little bit ago by Closey and Laura Hahn. It's called The Experience. And it's Closey, C-L-O-Z-E-E, in case any of you guys want to look it up. Uh, Which, by the way, reminds me, we're starting to finally put together a playlist on SoundCloud. So, um, yeah, you can check that out. Um, I think there's some back doings that are past, um, you know, months that are on there already. And you should see more popping up. So find uh, Positive Head Podcast on SoundCloud if you want to start tapping into the music. But how appropriate with this brand new track that just went up as uh, Closey wrote, happy to share my new track, The Experience, with the amazing Laura Hahn. This song is reminiscent of the human condition, the struggle, the beauty, the mundane, the thrill. This song explores common threads in the lives of one another. No matter how different we may seem, we are connected in the experience we share. So, yeah, there you go. How perfectly appropriate, you know, we, no matter how different a perspective is, We are all way more connected than we are separate. So bring that to your next, um, your next struggle with another human being. And, uh, as we talked about in this chapter, we just read and, uh, I hope you enjoy this song as much as I do. Have a lovely day.
Sky.